Good evening. Welcome to the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, September 16th, 2007. Very, very interesting week in the markets this week, although I tend to uh, start many of the videos that way as of late because the volatility has just been so huge that it's an interesting week basically every week in the markets nowadays. Um, we had a breakdown on Monday, which was here, that really surprised me very much, to be honest with you, that we rallied back from that point. If you look at an intraday chart of the S&P here and go backwards to Monday, which was here, September 10th, the breakdown here was very, very strong. Notice how big the candles are. It's, it was a while since we've seen big body candles all in a row like this. And I felt it was extra bearish as well because it was a gap up day. You can see here there was a pretty sizable gap in the SPX. We closed uh, somewhere around the uh, 1453 area on the Friday before. And then we opened up uh, around four or five points higher here and then just sold off hard. And this selling off hard here broke the trend line here, right? And there's a point of contention here as to how you draw these things if it's supposed to be, you know, from the body here, from the shadow. But if you want to draw it from the shadow, then honestly, it's even a better case for the bears, right? Because you would have already broken on Friday. But I was going to give the market kind of a pass here and just draw it from the body here, which I thought would be not as bearish. So drawing from the body, it still broke. And then out of nowhere, like I said, the market just rallied. And since then, we've run hard the whole rest of the week. Tuesday, Tuesday was a big rally day. And Wednesday was flat. Thursday, we went up again. And Friday, which was opening up um, on a bearish note on Friday, ended up rallying right back and closing, you know, pretty much almost dead flat in the SPX. We do have a Fed coming up on Tuesday next week, which I think could, could throw a wrench in this whole thing. But just imagine that the Fed wasn't going to happen. And, and the Fed, then the reaction to the, to the Fed cut, whether it's a quarter point or nothing or a half point or whatever, uh, could either be positive or could either be negative. And it, and it could blow all this chart pattern out of the water. But imagine if there was no Fed, you would have to be thinking very, very bullish at this point. There is no possible way you could be thinking this market could be falling down. And if you are, I would say that tech, from a technical standpoint, you'd, you'd be dead wrong. I mean, you have the inverted head and shoulders here, making the right shoulder here, and then a higher low was already put in here. The 200 MA has held so far, and we broke out higher. Now you're above the 50 as well, which is important. This is the first time since all the way back here, since we broke down in July, that the markets have actually traded over the 50 MA. Okay? Now, believe me, and I totally understand, the fundamentals are kind of going against this. I mean, the crude oil set a record this week, very, very high. We moved up over 80, but then again, as the crude sets records and makes sharp moves, what happens to oil stocks? They seem to move in sync, right? XOI has run up a bit, but the OSX is much better, right? Oil services is just on fire. The consolidation here in the services names such as Halliburton, Schlumberger, BHI, etc. I mean, this to me looks like a buy, okay? And remember that the oils and the services are heavily represented in the... Um, S and P gold, which is also another commodity people watch closely, also continues to break out. Remember, we called gold uh, somewhere around here in this particular video. So far, that has worked out very, very well. We're still saying any pullbacks in gold are probably viable. We're hanging out right here around seven hundred dollars per ounce. Okay, so fundamentally, I would have to agree with people, especially with that weak jobs report coming out saying that we contracted uh, jobs by four thousand when they were expecting to add a hundred thousand jobs. Certainly. Yes, I mean, the news out there is kind of bearish, but that news supports the Fed cutting rates, and apparently the market, I think, seems to be wanting to price that in, that the Fed is going to actually do something and bail people out, and hence this bullish action. What happens on Tuesday, however, does remain to be seen. Now, the other thing I want to point out coming in next week is we are going to get a re uh, report from Lehman on earnings, which is going to be on Tuesday. Lehman is also starting to break trend a little bit, right, which I would say is kind of bullish. This is all stuff that's kind of adding to the bullish argument, right? There's Lehman. Uh, you can see here on the XBD, which Lehman is a part of, right? I mean, look at this pattern. Not only the inverted head and shoulders here, but since you made the inverted head and shoulders, what has happened? You've just built out the right shoulder sideways without falling down. So to me, these broker dealers are ready to go this way, not this way. I think it would be very rare for, especially since you're closing already here, right? At the top end of the range here, this does not make a lot of sense to me at this point that you're going to fall back down and knock on this door again when you've already knocked on this door three times here, right? To me, this feels like brokers up this way, right? Then the Fed's going to hit at 2.15 on Tuesday. Lehman's going to be Tuesday morning. Morgan Stanley's going to report Wednesday in the morning, all right? Also bullish, same inverted head and shoulders, and GS as well, 
Goldman, which is looking phenomenal. Right? I mean, it's completely turned itself around. Done the hokey pokey down here with the inverted head and shoulders. And again, you know, and I hate to go backwards to old videos, but I do want you to recall that I talked about this weeks ago when this happened, when we were down here, and I did say I got to be thinking up rather than down because the inverted head and shoulders is the strongest pattern in the entire world, and I have yet to see this fail. I, it, it has a few times, but it's very, very rare. When you see this, left shoulder, head, right, no matter how bad the news is, this tends to not fail. I'll be honest with you. I'm the, I'm the first person to admit I was very, very surprised that the market did not retest here. But then when the discount window thing got opened up and pushed the markets up, you know, it just didn't happen. We did not retest. And it's very odd. Usually on a huge breakdown like this, you will retest. But in this case, we didn't. All right, let's take a look at how the uh, week set up on the overall volume matrix. This is, of course, for those of you joining us for the first time, a snapshot view of what's happening in the markets from a top, from you know, kind of top down. This is uh, Monday through Friday of this week. These numbers are self-explanatory. These on the top, green ups are in green, downs are in red. These numbers here is the overall volume increase or decrease in the market uh, compared to the day before on the uh, New York Stock Exchange and on the Nasdaq. And this is the breadth ratio, which I think is very, very important, which is basically the up volume divided by the total volume. So any numbers over 50 are positive. Any numbers under 50 are a little bit more bearish. The one thing I do want to point out is this. The overall volume, notice it's been declining all week. We didn't get any accumulation days. It, it really shouldn't be a summer thing anymore because summer's pretty much over. So I do think that's kind of strange. I was reading some statistics recently that some retail investors are just getting tired of all the chop and tired of all the volatility, and they're taking some money out of it. But at the same time, I mean, market still seems to be holding, right? I mean, you can't argue with these numbers here on top. I mean, Thursday was definitely strong. Friday gapped down and closed strong. So, so far, definitely more bullish action than bearish action. However, I would like to point your attention to this, that the overall volume in the market has not been strong. And that does not bode all that well for longer term. We're not seeing it pick up. If we do break out over this level here in the S&P and we start to see SPX closes above 1490 1500 maybe the Fed does it maybe it happens on Monday before the Fed I don't know we would like to see some sort of increase in overall volume come into the markets but that remains to be seen okay that's it for this week so we talked about the S&P strength we talked about some some sector strength we looked at some brokers Things seem to be firming here. Again, remember, Tuesday is the wild card. Be very, very careful out there. Anything can happen. Plus, I think these brokerage earnings are going to be big with the Lehman on Tuesday morning, the Morgan Stanley on Wednesday morning, uh, and then Thursday morning, uh, Bear Stearns and GS. So there's probably going to be a very volatile week in the markets coming up. Those of you that are longer-term traders, the buy and hold, swing type trading, two to five days, etc. you may want to take some cash off the table and not be a cowboy and not ride it out through this Fed because this is going to be a key announcement, I think. So let's see how it goes. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and of course, as always, all the good people in Chicago, Illinois at Think or Swim, I wish you good trading and good night.